sisters, I find this to be the one-two punch, the blood of Jesus and the Holy Rosary. The blood of Jesus, Our Lady appeared to Barnabas, you know, the teenager in Nigeria. And she said, if you want to know how to pray well and to please my son Jesus, say this prayer 500 times a day. I use my rosary bead and I go around my rosary with that blood of Jesus prayer 10 times. It takes usually 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes. It drives anything diabolical out of you and out of the house, out of the family, and it brings inner healing. Then the rosary. Our Lady's been asking at Mechagori and other places as well to try to pray even all four rosaries every day. I find this unbeatable, this combination of the blood of Jesus and the Holy Rosary. I want to tell you one story from the blood of Jesus that occurred in Texas some years ago. I was celebrating a healing mass at a church in Texas. It turns out the church was a church where my little brother was the pastor. His name is Father Tony. And he asked me to do a healing mass once a year for his people. I was in the rectory when the housekeeper came up to me. And she said to me, Father, can you please pray for my sister? I said, well, sure. Have her come to the healing mass tonight. And she said to me, well, Father, she can't get out of bed. Oh, well, where does she live? Well, Father, she doesn't live here. She lives in Victoria. She lives like an hour down the road in another city. Oh, well... Victoria is a good name. It means Mary, Queen, you see, the Victoria's Queen. But I said, you know what? I don't have time. I have the healing mass tonight, and I have about 100 appointments for this week. So I didn't have time to drive an hour away, you see, and minister and then drive an hour back. I couldn't drop off two or three appointments for that purpose because they'd already signed up, you see. Wouldn't be fair. But, brothers and sisters, I know what technology is really for. Technology is for the gospel. It's not for Satan. It's not for sin. It's not for pornography. Technology is for Jesus. It comes, he made all of that. It's to further the kingdom. So I said, did your sister have a cell phone? Oh, yes, she does, Father. Get her on the line right now. So she called her sister. You know, you know where I learned that from? Believe it or not, Pope Benedict XVI. He did that. He'd be out there in the square in the Vatican on the Wednesday audiences. I still remember an old man, Pope Benedict was going through blessing people, and he called the Pope over and asked Holy Father if he could speak to his elderly wife on the phone. And Pope Benedict sat next to him and spoke to the woman on the phone. Do you realize Pope Benedict is, is a saint? We have a retired saint there in the Vatican. Amen? Well, get her on the line, I said. And so she got her sister on the line. And as she's calling and the phone is ringing, I quietly asked the housekeeper, what is your sister sick with? What is the sickness I'm going to pray for? It helps a little bit to know a little something. And I expected her to say, because she couldn't get out of bed, like multiple sclerosis, you see, or cancer, something like that, a brain tumor. I've seen all of those things healed. But she didn't say that. I was actually surprised. You know what she said? She said, my sister has depression. And you know, beloved, I began to realize how serious depression can be. It's a serious illness, isn't it? In a way, it's worse than cancer. Because you, no, you can't get out of bed. Your reason to live is taken away from you. You're so sad. I said, I said depression. I said, well, how long has she had it? Well, Father... She's been seen a psychiatrist for five years. She's been depressed for five years. 
Is she on medication? Yes, she's on big drugs called psychotropic drugs, big mind-altering drugs, but they're not helping. How long has she been in bed? She told me five months in bed. She's not even left her bedroom in five months. And so, one of the great fringe benefits of being a Catholic priest is that I drink holy water every day, all day long. <laughs> it's a slight little advantage that I have. I may have a vow of poverty, but I have other perks, you know what I mean? I have no salary at all, but my retirement benefits are simply out of this world. Amen? And I got the best employer of them all. And you should see his mother. Amen? So he, she got her sister on the phone. I said, what's her name? She said, her name is Lupe. And it's a really popular name, you know, among the Mexican people for Guadalupe. So I got Lupe on the phone. I said, Lupe, this is Father Jim. How are you doing? And you should have heard that poor lady's voice. I really, it was so depressing just to hear her voice and so sad. She was like barely alive. She's not been out of her bed in, in five months. She barely makes it to the toilet on her own in the bedroom, right back to her bed. And she said, hi, father. I said, Lupe, I'm gonna teach you a new prayer. Is that okay? Okay, father. See, si, Padre. Okay. It's a simple prayer, Lupe. I'm going to say, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, and you're going to answer, save us and the whole world. Can you do that, Lupe? Okay, Father. All right, let's go. We're going to say it 10 times in a row. So I led her in the prayer that you just learned, approved by the church with an imprimatur. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, Save us. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us. We said it 10 times with her broken voice and on number 10, when I said most precious blood of Jesus Christ and she answered, save us in the whole world, I heard this. Father! Yes? <laughs> Father! I feel fire inside my body. Yama de amor. The flame of love. I feel fire inside my body. And she said it's strong. It didn't sound like the same woman. I said, really, Lupe? That's good. That's the Holy Spirit. How did he come down at Pentecost? Like a fire. Amen. I said, Lupe, let's do 10 more. You know, my dad said, when you're winning, keep going. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we did 10 more. So I, I let her again, most precious blood of, in Spanish, preciosísima sangre de Jesucristo, sálvanos y el mundo entero. Preciosísima sangre de Jesucristo, sálvanos y el mundo entero. We said it 10 times. At the, sí, sálvanos y el mundo entero. Sí. And at the end of the second 10, I heard this. Father! <laughs> yes, Lupe. I feel electricity up and down my body. I said, I bet you do. <laughs> she was completely healed of severe psychiatric depression in three minutes and is still healed today. More than 20 years ago. Still healed today. By Jesus, amen. amen, the only name given to the human race by which man can be saved, amen. amen. Now, shall I tell you the rest of the story or no? Amen. I didn't tell you the other half. I don't say this to every group, but you've been pretty good boys and girls tonight. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you the second half. Can you keep this secret? <laughs> Do your best. Here's what I didn't tell you. I don't, I don't share this with every group, depending on the group, but I figure in counter ministries, I should be able to say this to you. Amen? Amen. I'm leading her, the first 10, most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I find myself in her bedroom, physically looking at her from the ceiling. 
I was standing in front of her sister in Robstown near Corpus Christi, Texas, but I was also there in Victoria in her house, in her bedroom, in the air, looking at her. I don't know how that happened, but it sure was cool. <laughs> and I was saying, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, she would answer me, save us in the whole world. She couldn't see me, but I could see her. I saw her answering what I was saying. Is that cool? Let me ask you, is God cool or is God cool? Amen? Let me ask you this, is God great or is God great? See, si, Dios es grande, amen? God is great. He's truly great. I didn't think of that. God did it, amen? And I'm watching her. We do 10, and she, then she says to me, Father! I'm right there. She didn't see me. I feel fire in my body. And I said, I'm sure you do. I said, let's say 10 more. And we did 10 more. As we started the second set of 10, I saw something standing at the foot of her bed. Tall and skinny, wearing a gray robe with a cowl or a hood. Totally black and evil blackness. His hands were in his sleeves and he was motioning like a monk like this. And he was chanting a satanic chant. He was doing something like this at the foot of her bed. I could see her and I could see the demon. The Lord spoke to me and said, that's the curse. That this woman was cursed by someone else. And this is the demon that came from that curse. Beloved, you better believe that the devil is real. But God is 10,000 times more real. Amen. 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 God is more real. Amen? Amen. But believe he's real. You know, I've been trained as an exorcist. I've worked in that field for 40 years now. It's very real. He's come to my room in person. And don't play with that. It's real. But when Mary walks in the room, the devil becomes a chihuahua. <laughs> when Our Lady walks in, he goes, uh-oh. He shrinks right down and leaves. He goes, Whoa! He leaves. You have on your team the one who crushes the head of the serpent. Amen? Amen? She does it through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the promise of her son. Amen? Amen? It's the first promise of God to the human race. You will lay in wait for the woman and her heel will crush your head. Don't forget, you're the heel. Amen? Amen. You are the heel. Father and I are the big toe. Amen. We will crush the head of the serpent. Amen? Amen? I said, let's pray it 10 more times. She doesn't know that I'm there. We're praying 10 more times when I see the serpent, the evil one, the demon, rocking back and forth. He's truly gruesome. There's like a dark, evil fog around him. When we got to number 10, it would actually be number 20 now, the second set of 10, to number 20, and I said, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, and she answered, save us and the whole world. When she said that, that demon was pulled out of the room against his will, against his force, his own nature. God pulled him out like a vacuum cleaner. He was gone. I mean, he was gone. Hey, Amen. He was gone. I saw him leave, and then she said to me, Father! And I wanted to say, I'm right here. Would you shut up? I'm but I wasn't allowed to say that, you know what I mean? Father, because I feel electricity up and down my body. And I said, I'm sure you do. Of course she does. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I've used that prayer with teenagers all over the world. I've seen more than, I would say, at least 100 teenagers healed of depression with that prayer. At least 100, usually within three minutes. As soon as they start saying this prayer, the demon of depression, suicide, and cutting begins to leave them. Almost every time, whatever country I'm in, the teenager says to me, Father, I feel lighter. I feel lighter. So you have now a new weapon in your arsenal. Use that every day. Do what you can. Our Lady recommends 500 times a day. That prayer and the rosary is a one-two punch that won't lose. It always wins. Jesus and Mary.
Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me? Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary. Now louder. Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary. The one two punch. The one two punch. Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary. They never lose. They never lose. Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary. They love me. They love me. Jesus and Mary. Jesus and Mary. They love everyone. Jesus and Mary, they will win. Amen. Friends, that's enough for tonight. Amen. I have a lot more, but I think that's enough for tonight, okay? I gave you, thank you, brother. I gave, thank, thanks be to God. I gave you two handouts. Uh, one is the four sets of forgiveness. Anybody in your family, in your life, yet to forgive? Now remember, you can't enter heaven if you haven't forgiven somebody. You have to go to purgatory for a while until you learn to forgive. Let's do our purgatory here. Amen? Amen. So there's four steps there to help you to forgive anybody who has ever hurt you. And I mean anybody, anything. I mean including murder, which has happened in my own family, so I know it can be done. We can forgive murder, we can forgive rape, we can forgive anything. Amen? Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. There are four steps there that will lead you through. Do it slowly and carefully, putting the name in there, beginning with a decision. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you, Aunt Jill, now and forever. Or maybe it's your mother-in-law. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you, mother-in-law, now and forever. It might be your own spouse. It might be your son or daughter. It might be your dad or mom. Amen? Amen. When you can forgive completely, then the second step is to bless them. You always bless your enemy with a giant blessing, not a little blessing, a big blessing. Never bless Uncle Joe. Maybe Uncle Joe cursed you when you were young and was mean to you. And so you say, God, I hereby forgive Uncle Joe. And tonight I bless Uncle Joe, but you know, God, that limp Uncle Joe has on his left leg? Let him keep that limp till he dies. <laughs> That's how we forgive. You know what I mean? Like halfway? Don't do that. Say, Lord, heal Uncle Joe. Heal his leg. Bring him to heaven. Give him joy. And listen to this. Give him a higher place in heaven than I will have. Amen. Then you bless them. Before that, you're playing games. Jesus held nothing back. He shed every drop so this big fat sinner could go to heaven. He didn't hold back one drop. Don't you hold back one blessing. God, give the one who hurt me the most. Give that one joy. Breathe into heaven and give him a higher place in glory than me. That's when you know you've forgiven. Amen. I can't say it. Hallelujah. Now, I gave you another handout, too, the prayer for release from ancestral curses, a half one, a half sheet. It's on the back. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Very good. This is from the same young man, Barnabas, the teenage mystic who's now in the seminary, starting to be a priest in Nigeria. I met with his archbishop. He's now in the seminary. This also has an imprimatur, prayer for release from ancestral curses. The Lord has been sharing with myself and others, he wants to clean up every family in the church. Any curse over your family, for instance, alcoholism, for instance, the spirit of cursing and anger, that is a sin and is a big sin. How about the spirit of arrogance and pride? Our family is the best family in the world. We're better than that family. Don't say that. God loves every family. Amen? Maybe there's an, a spirit of witchcraft in your family. Maybe masonry or Freemasonry in your family. Maybe a spirit of suicide in the family. Great-grandmother Jones killed herself. Then Grandmother Smith killed herself. Then my mother-in-law killed herself. Then my son committed suicide. You better believe there's a curse at work there. Amen? Maybe great-grandmom had cancer, and then, and then grandmom and grandmom's sister, grandmom's brother had cancer, and then seven of their children had cancer, and now the grandchildren have cancer. That trail, beloved, is a sign that there's almost certainly a curse at work. 
Amen? Maybe marriages break. No one keeps their marriage, every marriage, into divorce for four generations in a row. Maybe there's sexual perversion in the family. That is a curse as well. This prayer can break any curse over your family. Approved by the church with an imprimatur. The Lord asks us to pray it 144 days in a row. So I'm going to say the prayer now and ask you just to listen to the prayer. And then you take this home. I'll have you say it after me later. Let me say it right now. Eternal Father, you are the only immortal God. God who is love, merciful, and kind. Look at your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy. I offer you the pains of his scourging at the pillar, his wounds and blood, for all your people who are living under the weight of the curse, due to the sins of their ancestors and their disobedience for breaking the covenant they made with you. May you set us free through the scourging of your Son. Heal us through his wounds and save us through his precious blood. Amen. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, release us from curses. Holy wounds of Jesus Christ, heal our wounds. By your scourging, seal us. Amen. A gentleman in my own community, I'm stationed in Georgia. I have a Catholic homeschooling community out in the woods. A very, very blessed community. Five chapels with the Eucharist. Even the teenagers make holy hours on their own. Is something beautiful? The whole world will be Catholic one day soon. Amen? Amen? The whole world will be Catholic. You say it now. Would you raise your right hand? Say this. I believe in prophecy. I believe in, prophecy. I believe in, God's, word. I believe in God's word. And I know I that every knee shall bow every knee shall and every tongue shall confess every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The whole world will be Catholic. The whole world will be happy. The whole world will be happy. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. Did you know that Bishop Sheen, you know Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, right? The venerable Bishop Sheen. Did you know that he prophesied uh, uh, almost the exact words? He said, one day through Our Lady of Fatima, the entire Muslim world will become Catholic. The entire Muslim world will become Catholic through Our Lady of Fatima. Amen? Amen? Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants to get you ready for all that's coming. He does not want that excess baggage over your family, whatever it might be, alcohol, drugs, perversion, divorce, suicide. Let's say this prayer now together for whatever is aching your family. Okay, we're going to say it now together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All together. Eternal Father, you are the only immortal God, God who is love, merciful, and kind. Look at your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy. I offer you the pains of his scourging at the pillar, his wounds and blood, for all your people who are living under the weight of the curse due to the sins of their ancestors and their disobedience for breaking the covenant they made with you. May you set us free through the scourging of your son. Heal us through his wounds and save us through his precious blood. Amen. Precious blood of Jesus Christ, release us from curses. Holy wounds of Jesus Christ, heal our wounds. By your scourging, seal us. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. A family in my community said this for the 144 days. The father came to me saying, Father, all my siblings are atheists. We all were raised Catholic. We all got PhDs. He had a doctorate too. And they all left the church and left God. 
what do I do? I prayed for a moment. I said, you know what? I want you to pray this prayer, and I gave it to him. All four atheist siblings came back to the Catholic Church that year. All four. Amen? And so, beloved, you each owe me two or three million dollars. Because each one of these prayers is golden. Amen? So, beloved, to end, I'm going to give you a little blessing, but we're going to bring a table out here in front, and we're going to place the robe of Padre Pio, and I invite you to come up and touch it just for a moment, because we have so many people. If you, if you linger for five minutes, it takes like a long time for everybody. So just for five seconds. But I brought three other relics as well that I think you might be interested in. So first, the holy robe of Padre Pio. So when we do start, feel free to come up and place your holy hands on his robe. And I want to ask you sincerely, please, I ask you, pray for the grace to become a saint. Okay? Don't come up. You don't want to be a saint. Don't come up. I want everyone to come up. Ask Padre Pio to pray for you to become a saint. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to place three more first-class relics here on the table. Is that okay? Yes. A first-class relic is a bone or the blood of a saint. The second relic will be next to Padre Pio is, he's called the Padre Pio of the East. His name is Saint Charbel, the great Lebanese mystic. This is his bone. In fact, I get anointed just holding it. The Holy Spirit comes over my arm. He probably has as many miracles, if not more, than Padre Pio, but they're not jealous of one another at all. <laughs> I'm going to have his first class relic next to Padre Pio. I'm not going to open it for safekeeping, but feel free to touch it. We've had miracles with all of these relics, first-class miracles. Just feel free to touch it. Then I wanted to bring the bone of a, of a pope. So I have here a first-class relic with the papers, too, from the Vatican of St. Pope Pius X. Do you know that he had a healing ministry as pope? As pope, he would pray over people in his white robes to be healed constantly. He had a healing ministry as Pope. Well, the first Pope did too, right, St. Peter? So I think all Popes should have that ministry. Amen? He's the one that approved Holy Communion for little children. He was perhaps one of the greatest Popes of all time. So his bone is here. If we touch it just for a second. And then lastly, I have somebody, the blood of another new saint. I don't know if you've heard of him. I've had the most miracles with this one. His name is St. Hannibal. Have you heard of Luisa Picaretta and the divine will devotion? This is the priest who discovered her, who was assigned by the bishop to be her spiritual director, who gave the first imprimatur to her writings. This is the priest. Her book's called The Book of Heaven. It's the blueprint for the age of peace that's coming soon. It's the blueprint for what's about to come. All 36 volumes now have two imprimaturs, the second one from the Vatican. Fully approved, unbelievable, so beautiful. This is the saint who approved it. John Paul canonized him and had his statue put there in the Vatican with, on the rotunda. This never happens with a new saint. John Paul said, you put him there because he's teaching us a new and imminent holiness that is coming. I'll tell you one miracle about this, okay, and then we'll stop. One miracle was so unbelievable. When I first received this relic in California, I was at a convent ministering to the holy nuns there. After I ministered to them, I was next to the mother superior, and she said to me, 
Father, do you know who that is? It was a beautiful statue. That's Saint Annabelle. I was so shocked. Did anybody knew about him? That's Saint Annabelle. She said, "Yes, that's our founder." I said, "You're kidding me." We are the daughters of divine zeal, she said, the order that he founded. Father, yes, can I give you a first-class relic of St. Annabelle? She was a superior, and every superior in the world had been given four first-class relics. So she gave me one. I couldn't believe it. I said, thank you, sister. The next day I was giving a retreat in another part of California. After Holy Mass, I was running to give my next talk when the acolyte, the altar server, stopped me. He was a grown man. He stopped me, and he said, Father, please. I only had like 30 seconds. Father, please. Yes. He says, I'm having open heart surgery this coming week. Could you please pray over my heart? And I thought, oh my gosh, I now have 20 seconds. What am I going to do? I don't have time to even to anoint him. But I don't want to say no either. And I remember, oh. Sister just gave me a relic. I pulled it out of my pocket. I said, let me put this on your chest. It's a drop of his blood. I put it on the man's chest. When I did, I heard and felt four thumps. Boom, 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 boom. I heard them. I felt them. My hand moved. His chest pumped four times. Boom, 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 boom. I said, did you feel that? He said, it felt like a locomotive. I said, you've just been healed. I'll see you later. And I ran off. <laughs> he called me a week later. He went for the pre-op, you know, the, the CAT scan the night before the operation to know exactly where to cut. He told me the doctor came out shaking and white and said to him, what did you do? There are no scars at all. You have the heart of a teenage boy. What happened, he, did he say? What happened? He said, Jesus happened. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So, beloved, we might need an usher or two to help us. Feel free to come up and touch them quickly and ask for whatever healing you or your family needs. But do not fail to ask to become a saint. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. The Lord be with you. May the God of miracles, the God of saints, the God of joy live within you, heal you and transform you now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For the Holy Trinity, for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.